Hi, this is Phil Bedford, and welcome to the Rebel Networking. Hi, we're back again with uh, Amal Loring. I and mean, this is such a powerful uh, subject, really, I think, for networking. Um, people are out there thinking about handing out business cards and how do I meet strategic people and how do I dress. And yet, I think culturally, they can be messing up left, right, and center, which negates all that hard work in those other areas. So, this is a subject that I, I'm really, really uh, keen to explore more. Um, Amal, one of the things I hear a lot. Uh, particularly in in the Arab world, is this concept of losing face. Oh uh, yes. Um, can you tell us something about that, please? Sure. It's um, uh, more about saving face. Okay. So, for example, um, if I made made a bad buying decision, uh, either in my family or my uh, work uh, place, then I don't want it broadcast because I come from an honour shame society. I don't want it broadcast that I actually made this mistake. So, what are the, the steps? That I should do to, to actually save face and it might be X, Y and Z. So another example people uh, often talk to me about is the time issue. So I agree at time with somebody or Mr Abdullah you know let's meet at 10 o'clock tomorrow and Mr Abdullah says oh 10 o'clock inshallah. So I turn up on time and then Mr Abdullah is 20 minutes late um, and I've seen people go oh you're late and of course it's very confrontational in a society which is non-confrontational and very direct in that person's face. I'm putting him on a, on a back foot. Um, and really, uh, from the inverse, uh, a lot of the Arab culture say to me, what is it with you British people and you American people that you have to be on time? And their society comes from a spontaneous society where 40, 50 years ago, they may have been in the desert and they'd have to be a lot more spontaneous than, only, than the very, very structured West. So there might be things that delay them. For example, a family member that arrives just before they're going to leave to come to my meeting. And that family member, would you believe, is more important than actually meeting with somebody like me who's equally important in my eyes. So that delay with the mother-in-law coming or something happening, they have to get something for their home, takes priority in that extended uh, culture, in that honor shame culture. Whereas for us, it would be, oh, I'll come back and do it later, I'll catch you later. And then, you know, you carry, you make sure whatever cost you're at that, you know, business meeting on the uh, time. Okay, so I'm, I'm seeing two scientists. So in, in the culture here, I love mean, the GCC, it's more about family first, Correct. relationships first, come first, and then business, I'm assuming. Correct. Okay, whereas for Westerners, it's more about, well, I work, and then my family comes, apparently it might appear that they come second. So, you know, if I've got a business meeting, then I, I turn there. If my mum calls me on the phone, it'd be like, you know, sorry, I can't talk to you now because I'm in a meeting. Yes, correct. So that you might see in a Western environment, where, whereas in an Arabic environment, they would pick up the phone family first, would that correct. be correct? Yes, yes. So, so, so where's there a clash there? Because we see this a lot. And uh, at the end of the day, you're going to find, um, I suppose, a bit of um, a lack of connection in both directions when we see this? Mm. Well, in actual fact, if you look at it, um, the GCC, the Arab countries, they're putting a family uh, first above work, and as you said, we're appearing to do with the reverse, or the inverse of that, but ultimately it is about provide, providing for our family. So it's to be flexible when that person is uh, late. But it, there may be occasions when people you know, abuse that, so by simply sending a, a text, you know, are you on your way? Yes, I'll be there in five minutes, which is non, you know, non uh, conference, uh, non confrontational. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I wanted to uh, say is that that person, say you're meeting that person for the first time, uh, to build that relationship rather than go straight in there and try and sell. You're building that relationship. Then the next time you come, say you set up another meeting to come and do a product de de uh, demonstration or talk through a strategy, whatever it might be. That person that you're in front of will have already done their homework about you through formal committees, which might be people within their organisation, or informal committees, people that uh, form part of their social fa fabric or their, their family fabric. So when that person, when you come back in front of that person already, they are already have started to decide, am I going to do business with this person? Is our relationship strong enough so that I can trust them? So what's important as the person going in, is to make sure that you've got those testimonials, to make sure that your uh, whole image and your whole background checks out. 
to make sure that you're making a solid uh, approach. And those testimonials and uh, references, you know, they will speak very, very well and very highly of you. So this is almost, uh, we talk about uh, your personal brand, you know, when people hear your name, what do they think? Um, um, what you're saying there is even culturally that's super important. So they will actually be checking you out before they meet you or during after to see if you're uh, trustworthy in business. That's correct. And they would ask their friends or they'd go on Google and... Not necessarily Google because um, uh, Google's that one step removed. It will be saying, oh, you know, Phil, I've heard all about this guy. Anybody else heard of him? In, in say, imagine it's a, 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 the male sort of um, meeting area. So, oh, yes, I've heard he's a good guy. Yeah, I've heard he's a good guy. Mm, okay. So that informal as well as formal checking, you need to be very aware of. So it's about networking, um, choosing the right network to network, and making sure that you do network extensively um, you know, within uh, not just your own culture, but other cultures, other countries as well. Well, some absolute gems of information there. Thank you so much. And uh, like I said, if you want to know more, please check out Amal's details underneath the video and get in touch. She's got loads more fantastic information to share. We'll see you soon on Rebel Networking.